I don't know about you, but being in such a digital world now, I kind of prefer sometimes to be more analog. Even with my weekly schedule, I write everything down, I highlight things, I write my to-do list, I just much prefer it that way. And I was thinking a while ago to document all my fabric, and at first it was like, oh, maybe I can scan it into the computer and do it that way. But then I realized, like, fabric and textiles is such a physical thing. Like, you want to touch the fabric, feel the fabric. So that's why I want to do an actual physical catalog and do the analog documentation of my whole fabric stash. I thrift a lot of fabrics, if not all of it is thrifted. So it has lots of fun stories behind, like what it used to be, what I upcycle it into, where I thrifted it. Sometimes I thrift in other countries. So it's kind of fun just to keep a little archive of the fun fabrics that I found and what I turned them into. Now I already had this binder randomly in my studio, not really sure what from, but it's gonna work perfectly. It's quite thick, which will be nice for all the fabric samples. And yesterday, or like last night actually, I printed out 30 pages. I might need more, but this is what I'm starting with, of the catalog template. And at the top, of course, I always add my logo, the date catalog, this is for the fabric swatch, and I randomly made it on the computer, but it happens to actually perfectly fit the swatches I made prior, so that worked out perfect. And then at the bottom, just where I source it from, either online, the country, or the thrift store that I know, original use because I thrift everything, so like tablecloths, curtains, whatever it may be, what I actually upcycle it into, just as kind of a little reminder for myself. And I left space for content. I don't always know, but sometimes the tags are still on so I can write it down. And just some notes, if I have any extra notes about the actual fabric. But pretty simple, I just thought these are kind of the only things that I wanna remember about the fabric. I noticed also that a lot of you guys are new here, so welcome, I'm Eleanor, a Canadian in the Netherlands, and I just love to thrift, sew, and upcycle. I actually have my own fashion brand, which is mostly what I'm documenting here on my channel. It is only 10 months old, so it's still a little baby, but I'm really loving it. And I also just love to sew my own clothes on the side to keep my creativity and my love for sewing alive. Otherwise, I think I kinda get over it, but, Welcome, and let's get started with cataloging all the fabric samples. If I'm looking kind of sweaty, it's honestly just because the attic has literally no ventilation and it's summer. So it's a bit hot, and I'm just gonna wet my hair up because this is gonna help, I think. I have a bunch of swatch books already. I'm just gonna take these apart because I made them and then probably never looked at them again because they were hiding in that little bag up there. So we're going to start with these, see what fabrics I have, and then I think I might start swatching some other ones as well. I don't know if 30 pages is going to be enough, but I need to get more ink before we can print more. And this is going to be a journey. But I guess it will just be an ongoing project always, and I'll slowly just work at it. Let's do the first one of this striped fabric. It looks so good already. Do I want to staple it or tape it? Maybe staple it. Now let's fill it out. Do I want pencil or pen? Sourced from here in Maastricht, so the Kring Loop Zoud, I remember. The original use was a curtain. New purpose was a cropped jacket. Content 100% cotton. News? Oh, it was um half and half curtain. There was a matching red panel, which maybe we can do next. Is this one? It came together. I'll just write matching red panel, exclamation mark. Perfect. Now let's do the next one. This one also pretty much all the same information. And then we'll just do matching striped panel. Nice. This is one of my Helsinki fabrics. Oh, this is a fun one. This was a tablecloth, but I actually did a market here in Maastricht a while ago, and so many older ladies said that they used to learn this type of stitching when they were little girls. So I feel like it's quite a vintage fabric. We'll add that in the note section. Oh, out of staples already. 
I think the hardest part is remembering where I sourced everything from. I think also Kring Loop Zoud. Kring Loop Zoud is a massive thrift store here in Maastricht that I always go to. Usually you see it in my like thrift with me videos. It's always the most successful place for fabric. <laughs> Original use tablecloth. Like already we have one, two, three, and four. I'm going to keep swatching, but if I come across anything exciting, I'll show you. of the swatches I have but I actually still have some templates left so I want to cut some fabric that I most recently got from Canada if you saw in my last video the Canadian haul I thrifted some fabrics there as well and some other like really special ones that I want to document first just because I love them no other reason and this is what I mean by like it's gonna take me a while to document all the fabrics I have because I maybe have too much but that's besides the point. Oh, this one has a good story to it. This and this. I also got my swatching scissors. It's like the weird zigzag. So the edges don't fray. I recently made a flower bag out of this one. It reminds me so much of my Oma, but she also always used to have this color palette in her house and had this big floral couch downstairs with not this pattern, but the exact same colors. <laughs> has a story because I actually made one of the crop jackets out of this it was my absolute favorite and when I was doing my very first photo shoot for my website and the initial launch someone actually stole the jacket in the park I had a rail of clothes they just took it off the rail and cycled away I always kind of keep an eye out for it in the city because the city's not so big but I haven't seen it yet it's kind of a funny memory. I have to laugh at it now. A little bit shitty at the time, but <laughs> it's a story. I'm hoping she's enjoying it and at least telling people about my brand. I have finished all the swatches that I could. I filled out all the pages that I was able to print off. And then now I want to put them in the binder, but I need a hole puncher. Got the two things I needed, this cute little hole puncher, can't get it open, but the hole puncher, and I actually just ended up getting more ink, black and color for the future when I want to print our pages, because I was running out already. How do I open this? There we go. Let's try one. Okay, nice. Now we gotta do them all. Do we want to do it in color order? No, let's not be that crazy. We completed the catalog for now. Like, I have it started, but it will forever be an ongoing project. And I already think I'm gonna have like volumes because this one is, it's not full yet, but it's getting there. So this is the first page. I chose a nice bright colorful one to start it off. I decided that the front is going to be fabrics I haven't used yet, so these are available. The new purpose line is still blank because, of course, I haven't cut it up yet. So I only have two so far. Then I just put this cute little paper to divide. Now these are all fabrics that I've already used and cut up. This is so satisfying. This is one I thrifted from Helsinki. I have another one that's like a vintage IKEA fabric. This one 
it has all these different faces on it and when my aunt saw it she's a teacher and she's like oh I know that fabric because I used to like cut out the faces and put it on her boards in her classroom like years ago so that was kind of fun this one I thrifted in Helsinki still love this I made a flower bag out of it which I think is still available in a store in Mustadict here I'm really happy with it. Oh yeah, this one was the fabric to the very first crop jacket I ever made. I made a sample for myself and like wore it so often and then that's when I decided like, okay, I'm gonna make more of these crop jackets because I really loved it so much. Still one of my favorite fabrics and I still wear this coat like all the time. There's also another really cool one that I had. Where did it go? Oh yeah, this one. I remember a lot of the stories of the fabric swatches now because it's only been in the past year. But I feel like down the road, this is going to come in handy and be fun to look at. But this is probably my most interesting upcycle because this used to be a hammock. And I ended up converting it into like an XL flower bag and a small flower bag. And they both sold. But yeah, I love this one. This is a fun like upcycle project that it went from hammock to flower bag. But that is my fabric catalog. It'll be something I'm always adding to but I'm so excited I started it. I've been thinking about this for so long and next week I'll see you for starting the next round of flower bags. We're making more.